Welcome to IAS number 23 or International Accounting Standards 23. We'll be covering the borrowing costs. So what that means is uh, if we were to build a particular asset and we borrow funds from the bank and the interest expense that we paid can be capitalised if certain criteria are met. And this particular section we'll be covering, first of all, the concept of interest expense to be capitalised. And you're right, we are talking about the capital expenditure. If it meets with certain criteria, we're going to be debiting the asset at cost account. And we credit, depending on whether we've paid the interest or not, perhaps we're going to be crediting the accrued expense liability or perhaps going to credit the cash paid or bank if we've paid the, uh, paid the interest expense already. And once we've understood the idea, we'll be covering the concept of qualifying asset. So in essence, what that means is, for a particular asset, it can be inventory, it can be property, plant equipment, investment property, or intangibles, intangible asset, if we meet with certain criteria, but the criteria is quite simple. First of all, it needs the substantial period of time to complete. And second, it is before its intended use. In essence, what that means is, if we've acquired an asset which can be used by the entity immediately. And if that's the case, the interest expense related to a loan for the asset cannot be capitalised. Because we are saying in what circumstances that we can capitalise the interest expense is where we are going to build an asset. And that asset has not been reached its intended use yet. But of course, it needs substantial periods of time to complete and it is uh, um, not reaching the usable condition. And if that's the case, we can capitalise the interest expense uh, which relates to the loan for the particular assets. And once we've covered that, we'll also cover the timing, including when to start to capitalise the borrowing costs, when to suspend to capitalise the borrowing costs, and when to stop to capitalise the borrowing costs. And in essence, particularly when we stop to capitalise the borrowing costs, is when the asset uh, reaches uh, is the, the condition for its intended use, which means it is substantially complete, uh, and if that's the case, we can uh, stop capitalising the borrowing costs. And finally, we'll be looking at disclosure requirement related to the capitalised interest expense, and in essence, it includes the amount of interest expense that we capitalised and what rate that we'll be using in capitalising the interest expense. Because in some circumstances, when we are looking at the interest expense in a second, it is not that straightforward. Because in some circumstances, now the business may have asset in or out during the year, but perhaps the business has borrowed its fund at the year start in general. And the changes in asset value later on cannot really reflect how much fund that we've spent or that we've used during the year. And that's why we may use the changes in carrying value of the property, plant, equipment or asset as an indicator to determine the amount of interest expense that will be capitalising later on. I will see a particular example related to that as well. So let's get started by looking at the first aspect, which is the concept of interest expense and what sorts of things that we will be covering in this particular element. First, we'll be looking at 
the accounting treatment related to the interest expense. So remember, the idea is this. If it does not meet with the criteria, and I say not meet for short, not meeting the criteria in the eyes number 23, we have to do for those interest expense is to charge as an interest expense directly to the profit or loss statement or statement of profit or loss as an expense and we credit the accrued expense or perhaps the cash okay and that's how we do it if you're not meeting the criteria later on you simply put that as an expense to reduce your profit down but if you meet with the criteria later on what you have to do as I said before is to debit the asset at cost account depending on what types of assets that you've got and we credit just to be the same the accrued expense as a liability or if you have set to it we credit cash or bank so that's straightforward but think about it this way <clears throat> if I were to build an element of property plant equipment that will cost me let's say one million dollars and if I were to borrow from the bank for one million dollars specifically related to the asset and that means the interest expense related to that one million dollars of fund can be capitalized okay if the asset is a qualifying asset and in this case it seems that it will be a qualifying asset uh, and um, for example before its intended use but on the other hand if I were to for example directly borrow one million dollars from the bank and this one million dollars borrowings or liability does not really relate to any specific asset which takes or will take a substantial period of time to complete and before its intended use and if that's the case that amount one million dollars of borrowings the interest expense on that cannot be capitalized because in essence it is not related to any particular asset at all so very very important concept here is the idea uh, the the fund that we borrowed must be uh, related to directly acquired asset okay so it's the concept of specific cost idea uh, so that's very very important so once you understand that the next element in the interest expense is related to the lease I mean the finance charges related to the lease so here we are talking specifically about when we are leasing an asset and we don't have funds to do that so that's why we uh, borrow some fund from the bank and we need to pay the interest to the bank and the interest that we paid to a bank related to the lease that interest can be capitalized okay uh, as the PPA as the asset or cost element so very very important on that and the ex next element is related to the exchange differences particularly if I were to borrow money from abroad and the monies that I borrow from abroad and the interest in, uh, I'm going to pay on that amount uh, so of course should be capitalized if it meets with certain criteria but on the other hand due to the monies that I pay abroad will be in a different currency uh, than what we normally operate in our home country there might be the exchange rate differences in there so just to give you an, uh, an example for example the normal interest is to be let's say ten dollars and because of exchange rate differences it results in the exchange rate gain for example two dollars in there 
Um, in this case, we are saying that because of the changes in exchange rate, and it results in a situation where we pay less of the interest expense than I should in the first place. So if I pay less interest expense, and that means it's a gain to our business, and according to the historical cost concept, here we are not settling $10 in total because we've got a gain of two. In essence, we are effectively paying $8. So that means we can only capitalize $8 as the uh, asset at cost. On the other hand, if we've got a loss on retranslation due to changes in exchange rate, for example, resulting in $1 of losses, in this case, the total amount that we can capitalize as the PPA costs will be $9 here. So very, very important concept that we have to bear in mind. And there's an example question okay, in your, in your book. Let's have a go through the, the question here. It says a business based in the USA took a foreign currency loan Japanese yen of 100 million at the start of the construction of its factory and the loans for one year. And it seems that the loan is related to the asset. And the asset is our own factory and it will take a substantial period of time to complete. And it seems it's not com been completed yet and hence it's the qualifying asset. So the idea is 100 million yen. The interest is 0 0.45 million dollars. We've translated already into our functional currency, which is the US dollar. And the Japanese yen of 100 million translated back to USD at the time of the loan was taken out and as at the year end was 0 0.9, 0 0.8. And this means at the start, we think we should pay 0 0.9, but at the end of the year, we can pay 0 0.8, which means 0 0.1 less than it should be. In essence, it's a gain of 0 0.1. And the total amount that we can capitalize, first of all, is 0 0.45. And then we should subtract the gain, because it's not a cost to a business, because we are capitalizing it as the PP at cost. In this case, it's not a cost. So the total amount we can capitalize on our statement of financial position would simply be 0.35. Okay? So quite important concept here. The next element within the interest expense we are looking at is related to the TII or temporary investment income or TII so what that means is we've taken our loan let's say $100 but during the year we only spend $80 of that because it's not reached to the second stage of our construction progress and if that's the case we've taken out 100 we spend 60 the remaining $40 that we haven't spent yet, we put it in the bank and buying some securities and earning the interest income. And if that's the case, the incomes that we've earned during that period is commonly known as TII or temporary investment income. In this case, what we should do, the accounting treatment will simply be the same as we look at the exchange gains and losses. In this case, we use the actual incurred borrowing costs um, to subtract the TII to be the total amounts that we can capitalize on our uh, financial statements. So let's have a go at an uh, interesting question okay, before we move any further. So here, on 1st January, the business borrowed $1.5 million to finance production of two ships, known as Ship X and Ship Y. And each is expected to be completed in one year. Okay, it, it simply be a substantial period of time to complete, but depending on which jurisdiction that you are in, 
some countries may require the substantial period of time criteria to be more than one year and sometimes will not. For example, the IFRS does not specify the substantial period of time uh, more than or less than one year. Okay. Work has started during the year and the loan facility was drawn down and incurred on 1st January. The remaining funds are invested temporarily. What that means is for ship X we need a total of $500 and we're taking out the $500 at the year start and we need uh, $250 from 1st January up to December 31st. And that means from July or 1st July onwards we need another $250. And that means for, six, for the first six months from January to June, we don't need the second $250 at all. And that's why the second $250, we put it in the bank and to earn uh, the interest income worth of 8%. And we pay the interest expense worth of 10%. And that's commonly known as a spread uh, charged by the bank so that the bank has, can make money from that of 2% but we are standing from the business perspective. In this case, let's do this question all together. It's the question called ship for example. Here got ship X. For example for the ship X we need a total of 500 because we drawn down the 500 we need to pay the interest on the full amount for 12 months at 10% and that become 50 and we need to subtract the temporary investment income of TII for a second 250. For the first six months, we receive 8%, which means $10 there. And the total amount that we can capitalize is to be $40. I will use cap for short. How about for ship Y? Again, if you've seen the question, we need the total of $1,000 in there. And for a 12 months period, we need to pay inches of 10%, which is a total of 100. We need to subtract the temporary investment income. And in this case, uh, for the second of our 500 for six months, okay, for second 500 for the first six months, receiving 8% in there of $20 that we cannot capitalize them. So the total amounts that we can capitalize would be $80 in there. Okay, so that's for ship X, 40, and ship Y of $80. So important concept here. Moving on then. The third element in the interest expense that we'll be looking at is the concept of weighted average. So what that means is, in essence, that we are borrowing from different banks. And uh, we are borrowing from different banks for the general borrowings, but now uh, we are using the, the funds that we borrow from the bank and to finance the construction of an element of PPE, for example. In this case, that funds may come from the bank A and bank B, charging different interest rates and which weight should be used. Of course, here we are using the weighted average rate. So let's see a very good example related to this. So a business has three types of loans during the year. It's the type one is 9% of bank loan, repayable in two years time, and second, 8.5% in three years time, and third, 7.5% in one year's time. And we are told about the year start and at the year end from 1st January to 31st December. We are told the third type of loan, the 7.5% loan note, was issued to fund the construction of a building and the construction has begun this year. But at, at the year start, the business began to construct a piece of equipment which is a qualifying asset uh, using the existing borrowings. In essence, we are told to say, right, uh, we are looking at the piece of equipment, okay, only in this particular question, because it's the only uh, qualifying asset. 
expenditure drawn down for the construction was, was 40 and 30 million dollars at the year starts and in October. In this case, the amount of interest, interest expense that will be capitalizing is for the 40 million dollars and 30 million dollars respectively. So let's see a question for that. So the 40 million dollars and the 30 million dollars of how can we do it? So because as you can see at the year end the liability we've got is 130 and 90 dollars respectively total to be 220 charging 9% and 8.5% of interest rate and we're going to use and we're going to calculate somewhere between these two which means the weighted average rate so if that's the case then the rate they're going to charge would be 9% and 8.5% but we need to calculate the weighted average rate first of all so we start this working the weighted average rate effectively we're taking the proportion of your liability of 130 and 90 divide this into a total liability of 220 and then be timing by the interest rate of 9% and 8.5% there and then we simply plot them together and that will become the weighted average rate of 8.8% so we take 8.8% to times by the amounts that we drawn down during the year and then we times by the uh, periods that we've used for this amount of money first of all is at the year start and second is in October so for the first 40 million dollars it will be the full 12 months and for a second of our 30 million dollars and it seems to me October, November, December three months okay instead of being 12 months and we plot them together and that will be the total amounts that we can capitalize is to be 4.18 million dollars so very important concept that we have to understand now as I said before the amounts that you can capitalize, the total or the maximum amounts that you can capitalize as the interest expense is the amount of expense that you've actually incurred. So actually incurred, the actually incurred interest expense is the maximum amount that you can capitalize. Okay, very important concept as well. You cannot exceed the capitalized interest expense, cannot exceed the amount uh, the interest expense actually incurred okay and very importantly we'll be looking at a concept of additions okay? in this particular case because during the year that a business may have asset coming in or coming out and we don't know the amount of monies that we spend on that particular asset and here we're using an estimate okay, from the change in carrying value of the asset to calculate the amount of interest expense that we should capitalize the best way to show this is to have a go at a particular example in the book so as you can see from 1st January to 1st April which means three months we got the additions of $300 of the PPE. So the accumulated carrying value from zero plus 300 will be total 300. So we times by three months and that will be $75 here. From 1st April to 1st September, we've got the and other additions in of $500 here. And at this particular point in time, the accumulated carrying value would be $300 plus $500 would be a total of $800. $800 accounted for five months and that would be a total of triple three dollars 
from 1st September to 31st December, accounting for another four months, it got additions of $600 in there, and the accumulated balance at the point in time would be 800 plus 600, would be 1,400, accounting for another four months, so the weight of your amount would be 467. So here, because the asset coming in or out, in this particular case, is the asset coming in, and in this case, we will see the total weighted average amount will simply be $875 here. And because we are not sure how much money that we're going to spend during the entire year in uh, financing those uh, assets at all, we are using the changes in current value as an estimate to calculate the, to calculate the amount of uh, capitalised interest expense and here we should base on $875 and to, and to apply the interest rate and the associated time period to calculate the amount of interest expense that we should capitalize in this case. Now, we finished the interest expense, uh, the first element in the ICE number 23 and now let's look at the qualifying asset. A, P, C, accounting for your future.